Hi, today I'd like to cover off the WireGuard VPN um, protocol service um, that's uh, built into our QTS5 operating system. Uh, this is one of the new features that you get when you upgrade to QTS5. Um, it will also be part of QUTS Hero 5 when that's released in a, in a couple of weeks time as well. Um, so WireGuard is a uh, fast and secure VPN tunnel option. Um, it's a little bit different from um, some other protocols that are out there. We've got our own Qbelt one, and one of the more popular ones would be OpenVPN. Um, sort of comparing uh, WireGuard with, with OpenVPN is generally WireGuard will only add about 4% of extra data to the top um, of the internet traffic compared to not using a VPN. Uh, whereas OpenVPN can use up to about 20%, depending on how everything's configured. Um, and WireGuard being simple, um, I wouldn't say it's necessarily the simplest to set up, but I'll go through that so you can do it uh, yourself as well. Um, but it's simple in the terms of how it's built in the back end. So there's only about 4,000 lines of code making up WireGuard, um, whereas with OpenVPN, I think it's higher than 70,000 lines. So there's, you know, every line of code could potentially uh, be a vulnerability down the line. Um, I mean, I'm not saying OpenVPN is, is not secure. It is very secure. It's proven. Um, it's been around for a long time, since May 2001, I think. Um, WireGuard's only been around since September 2019, um, but it's still a very good protocol. Um, initially designed just for Linux, um, but it's also now been opened up to every other platform, and you can download the WireGuard application on for just about every operating system um, and mobile device as well. Uh, today I'll cover how to set up a uh, server and the client side. Um, I'm going to do it on a Mac, but it's really the same um, in the Windows application as well. Um, so what I'm going to do now is go straight to the NAS. So here's a TVS-H1288X. Uh, this is running QTS5. Um, and I've got QVPN installed, which is an app you can download from our App Center for free. If you open up QVPN, um, you've got all the usual um, VPN server options, but now we've also got WireGuard added on the left. So if I go into the WireGuard option, we can see I've got it enabled, um, but I haven't really configured anything. What you will see is you will see um, a blank server name, um, a blank private key, and a blank public key, usually when you first come in here. So if I was to sort of erase um, the private key that's there right now, if you generate key pairs, you click this button, it's going to generate some text in there, which will also change what's in the public key box as well. So that's one of the first steps. You've got to put a name in, um, and you've got to set up the, uh, the private key. So now that's all set, um, we've got the public key, and you can copy that here. There's a button. We'll need to do that a bit later on as well. Um, so down here, it's wanting peers. So peers are like your users. These are different people that are going to be connecting. Um, I generally leave most of the things default. You will have to pick a DNS server. We do have a quick wizard that lets you pick a DNS server if you don't know what that is. Um, I've just set it to the same DNS server that everything else on my network here uses. Um, so here, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a peer. So with the peer, you can call it something that makes sense. So in my case, I'll just call it Craig. Um, so go down to the public key. Now, you don't need this public key that's listed here. You need a public key that's from the client that's connecting. So if I pull in here the uh, WireGuard software, so this is the Mac version, but it looks very similar on most other platforms as well. A little different on the mobile devices. Um, there's an option down here to um, click the plus symbol and you can choose to import tunnels from a file or add empty tunnel. We're going to need the add empty tunnel option. So when you click that you get this box and it pre-fills out the interface section and the private key and up the top we've got a public key that we need to copy. So what I'll do first of all is name it so I'm saying this is the TVS-H1288X because that's what I'm uh, going to be connecting to um, and then I'm going to copy the public key that's written here so I'll just right click on that, click copy. Then I'm going to come down here to the add peer section and I'm going to paste in the public key that I had. There is some extra advanced options if you want them, they're down there if you need them. Um, so we've got those. Now one other thing I'm going to need to do is this allowed IP section. I'm going to need that in a moment as well. So what I need to do first of all is I need to fill out the rest of the WireGuard file. So I've got everything copied and pasted. So what I'll do is I'll just paste that in over here so we've got that. So this is the format the file wants. So at the top we've got an address. So the address is what we want to be set from down here. So I'm going to copy this one. Okay, we'll go back over there. 
I'm going to paste that address in. So that's now there. Um, the DNS is 10.10.0.1, which is what I have set on the server. And now it wants the peer and it wants things like the public key. So this public key is the public key that you need from over here. So I'm just going to apply this peer so that they get added. And now I'm going to click this copy button over here. And I'm going to come back to the public uh, key section here and I'm going to paste that in. So this is the public key of the server that I'm connecting to. So what's written there is now written there. Um, the allowed IPs, I've just set it to all the zeros. Um, if you want to be specific about where the traffic's coming from, you can set that in there as well. Um, an endpoint. Endpoint's important because this is where your server is. Now, in my example here, I'm just connecting to it across the LAN. So I've got the LAN IP address of my QNAP. So that matches what you're seeing in the address bar on the web browser. Um, typically, what you might put there is something like craig.myqnapcloud.com colon 51820. If you do change the port over here on the listen port, you do have to change it here. Um, now, this port will need forwarding through a firewall. So if you are setting this up for remote access, into your network, you will need to forward UDP port 51820 or whatever that you set in this box. Um, I've set the persistent keep alive to 10, which matches what I've set for the peer down there as well. Um, this is just if you're behind a firewall, um, it just keeps the traffic alive, so keep the connection alive rather than dropping. Um, so that's everything that I wanted to set. So that's matching everything. I haven't had to change the interface private key. That was auto-generated, which generated this public key. And so long as this public key is added to your peer, it should work, so long as everything else is set correct. But you do need this public key typing on the peer because uh, the server uh, needs to know who you are as well. Um, so that's part of the authentication. The public keys and private keys, they all um, um, sort of coagulate together to become the security for the connection. Um, so I'm going to save that option there. <clears throat> so I'm going to say, yes, you can add uh, VPN connections on my Mac. So that's now connected up, uh, sorry, uh, added to the list. Um, currently it says inactive because I've not activated, I've not connected it. Um, so everything looks like it's all set up great now. So if I was to click activate over here, that's really all I need to do. Everything is connected, done, set up, it's, it's connected. We can see that I've now got a connection down here. Uh, the last handshake was four seconds ago, so this is now fully connected uh, with the uh, with the WireGuard application here on my Mac. So I now have um, a VPN tunnel between my Mac um, and the QNAP, and this would be the same whether you were remote. The only thing that would be different on the remote is the endpoint would be a public address um, or a public DNS name or an IP address if you're on a static IP address. Uh, you can use dynamic DNS addresses for that as well. Um, so that's how you would set up um, a WireGuard VPN tunnel um, on a QNAP NAS. We do have a, a help tutorial on our website as well. If you just search um, QNAP WireGuard, it's usually one of the first results that comes up and it gives you uh, lots of different options on how to set it up. So I'll do that for you now. So if I type QNAP WireGuard, you can see it there. Um, so here, how to configure WireGuard VPN server and client settings. And we've got options for enabling the server, um, how you do it on Windows 10, uh, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. And there's different sections for all. And as you go down, if I go to the Mac OS section, it shows exactly what I just showed you. Add in an empty tunnel. Um, we give you a clue here as to uh, what you need to type in the uh, configuration file. And down here, it just gives you a clue as to what goes under each heading and different sections that you're putting. Um, but you can usually just follow what I did in the video there. Obviously, you have to input your information, uh, not the information that I put. So do the copying and pasting from um, the public key that you create in your WireGuard app uh, when you're creating the connection, as well as uh, the public key from the WireGuard server on the QNAP itself. Um, that needs to go across to the peers as well. And of course, you need to create the peers. Um, if anybody has any uh, questions or needs any help setting up WireGuard, uh, please do let us know in the comments section, or you can email us at youtube underscore UK at qnap.com. Um, and I'll try to get back to you as quick as possible. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.